Hi, everyone. Welcome back to ESG Decoded. I am your co-host for today, Yvonne Harris, and I am joined by Miriam Lopez, who I'm going to introduce in just a moment. Um, but it probably comes as no surprise to our loyal ESG Decoded listeners that if you see me, then you know we're talking about the S in ESG. So the S being all things um, social, um, which relates to the people elements impacting businesses and organizations. And um, this is including employee relations, organizational health, people culture, diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging, DIB, DEIB, excuse me, community outreach and health and wellness. So um, we're going to have a lot of fun today um, with Miriam and Lopez. And Miriam is a strategic leader with more than 20 years of visible achievements in business transformation, human resources, and performance management. Miriam founded Seek More Consulting Group. After seeing a disconnect between individuals' dreams and reality, and um, they're being trapped in a continuous state of discontent and not knowing how to transform their businesses and their careers. Uh, really powerful um, driver there, Miriam. Um, her passion is providing accelerated transformation, empowering individuals, and developing top performing teams to get past what's holding them back and reach their highest potential. Miriam's trained in Lean, Six Sigma, and Dare to Lead, and she is a self-proclaimed lifelong learner. She holds a Bachelor's um, of Science in Professional Writing and Technical Communications from the University of Houston, and um, she's also fluent in Spanish. So, Miriam, a lot going on there. I think I got winded um, just introducing you, but what did I miss? Um, I know that you have so much goodness that you're adding to the world. Tell us more. Well, I think that what I, I would add to that and what I'm most proud of is being a daughter, right? Being, uh, I'm the, the youngest of, of five uh, and a, I was born in Mexico City, moved to Houston where it's home now uh, at the age of nine. And uh, I'm very proud of, of my roots and uh, the relationship with my family, my parents, so that's something that uh, I'm really proud of. And in everything that you read, I think the connective tissue there is, is being human, right? And seeing it from both angles, having gone through, um, you know, corporations and working there and being a leader and solving tough problems to being on the other side of helping individuals and organizations solve those problems. And how do we create a, a better world together? Because at the end of the day, that's what this is about. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging is about who we are as, as humans. Am I seen? Am I heard? Am I acknowledged? Do I matter? Do you see me? So my call every day, my purpose and why I get up is humanizing all of these things and creating action around them. So that's what I would add, Yvonne. Well, and it's a great um, segue into our conversation today, um, Miriam, which will focus largely on DEIB. Um, for companies that are still investing in their DEIB efforts, what do you suggest in terms of their areas of focus? Where can they um, drive the greatest impact and greatest change right now in those spaces? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing is the mindset. DEIB is not something uh, extra or is not a, a like to have or an upgrade. You know, it, it is the human aspect of every business. So I would say the first thing is to insert the DEIB lens into everything that the company does. Their mission, their vision, their values, policies, culture. Um, my dream is that one way, one day we get to a world where there will not be distinction, right? I mean, the ideal thing is like we wouldn't have to get companies and all of this to do the DIB because we would already have that richness of the equity and the diversity and we would have cultures of belonging as part of our natural extension of who we are. But until we get there... I think the first thing is uh, going in with what is the mindset that we're doing? Are we really taking this on? This is not a check the box effort. This is not so we can be compliant. This is a change of 
this is getting a lens to courage and the word courage stems from cur in French, which means courage, which means heart. And this is a work that is about our shared humanity. Okay. So if you're sitting there and you're listening and saying, where do I start? The first thing is start with your mindset. Uh, what is it that you, what's the definition you give to DEIB? What, what is your why behind doing it? And then being able to, once you have your mindset that this is about a shared humanity, then inserting the lens into every aspect of your company. So that it's not something that you're doing, it's something that you're becoming every single day. And Miriam, many organizations, um, in order to create awareness around DEIB, whether they're new in their journey or more advanced, um, they anchor to cultural um, and heritage recognitions. So I want to acknowledge June as being Pride Month mm -hmm. and, um, you know, building on kind of your strategic entry point into the conversation, but maybe get some of your thoughts that are more tactically based. What can organizations be doing to recognize Pride Month um, either celebrating their employees, creating that stickiness with their customers and clients, any thoughts or suggestions around actions that we can take for Pride Month? Thank you, Yvonne. That's a, that's a really great question because it's, uh, this is something that is part of my own journey, right? So I mentioned I'm the youngest of five, very conservative family. Uh, and I remember being 13 and telling my parents, uh, I have a crush on the neighbor and it's a girl. And they're, you know, they were devastated. What what happened? What did we do wrong? And it was very, very difficult. It probably took them 25 to 30 years for them to finally see, accept me, love me as I am, and not let that LGBTQ be something that stood in the way of love. And at the end, you know, I, I had to realize that they were, they just wanted me to be happy and they wanted me to have a a life where I felt a sense of belonging and, 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 and so far. So LGB, being a part of this LGBTQ community is something that, uh, that I've experienced in my own journey. And the experience has been one of not belonging, right? With that first initial reaction with my family, it's been of for many years during my corporate career, I would never share anything about my, my partner or, it was like silence, right? Like never was open. So to your, to answer your question, what can communities, what can um, businesses be doing right now for June and the LGBTQ population is really saying, am I creating an environment where people can be themselves, can be acknowledged, can be seen where their voice counts, right? So being able to acknowledge, Hey, June is pride month and let's inform let's create awareness uh do we support their that part of who they are and their identity and do we make it easy with language with actions with our, our values and uh i, I think that is uh, re the first company where i finally was able I, I remember clearly this was probably like 15 years ago and i was working for this company and uh, the owner of the company just asked me like so tell me your story and she just it felt like she really cared, number one. I wasn't just like a, an employee that brought talents, but I was a full human. And then she asked me, you know, about uh, just wanting to know more about my journey. And that's the first time that I finally opened up and said, oh, yeah, and I'm, and I'm gay. And even when I said it, I kind of startled, like, oh, no, you know. Um, and I remember her just, like, I, it was just so easy. And I felt so... That was the first company where I could fully come in with it, all the dimensions of my humanity and the difference it made in how my productivity, my comfort level, my contribution to the company, my engagement, right? Because I can walk in with my full humanity and be seen, heard and acknowledged just as I am. So this is a critical month 
to for companies to find their voice within and to take a stand for su supporting the LGBTQ population by creating awareness, by creating a language that is inclusive, by looking through their policies and combing with that lens and saying, is our lens wide enough that we welcome everyone? Do we make it comfortable to have those conversations? How do we refer to people in meetings? You know, are we saying... Uh, are we using language that's inclusive in, in our meetings, in our interactions? Do we assume bring your husbands, bring your wives to work, or are we broadening that? Uh, so all of those things that oftentimes we don't think about. Me, myself, being a part of the LGBTQ community, it, had, it was also a journey for me, even though I was a part of it, of really, number one, being comfortable with my own journey, and number two, being able to immerse in awareness and language and actions to really be open uh, to everyone. Miriam, two topics come to mind um, as I listen to all that you shared. Um, the first being language and the second being psychological safety. Um, let's talk about language first and pronouns usage. And um, you mentioned how you refer to partners or you know other things like that in the meeting. Give us some insight on the importance of use of pronouns and making sure that we're not making assumptions in that space either. Absolutely. And to build on what you your question in terms of psychological safety, for those of you that might be listening, that is one of the things that uh, I really built into the daily work with companies or individuals. You know, this stems from uh, Google doing uh, research of 180 teams for two and a half years and finding the secret sauce behind what made the most amazing teams. And what they came down to is something that it was coined uh, psychological safety by a Harvard professor. And that means that I am able to ask questions. I am able to speak openly. I'm able to make mistakes at work and nobody's going to shame me, right? So teams that have psychological safety are more effective, are more productive. They have longer retention. Another word for psychological safety would be trust, right? I, I trust uh, my team and we trust each other and we're in it together. So I think that um, psychological safety is a critical component that is tied to the DEIB work. And how do we operationalize that and how do we get that into our core values and into actionable ways? The, the second thing you asked about was the pronouns. And, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, even as part of the LGBTQ community, I didn't really quite get the pronouns. And now you can see them in my in, in, in there in my name, she, her, ella. But what the, the beauty of the pronouns is, again, it's it's it creates a, a space for people to be comfortable with how they identify and they see themselves. Right. So it transcends gender. It's about the identity that they see for themselves and giving people an opportunity to to share that with the world. This is how I see myself and this is how I want you to refer to me. You see me as a whole person, I see you as a whole person, and we honor each other. It really builds psychological safety. It feels, it builds trust, right? Because when you have the pronouns, and many of the, uh, the clients that we work with, we go in and we do uh, training around pronouns. What are pronouns? What, why, what's, why they matter? And the effect that it has on the environment. And after that, oftentimes we roll out uh, using pronouns as part of the signatures and their email. And uh, what we see is that time and time again, it really helps create that culture where people thrive, where they see, you see me, you hear me, I matter. And I'm accepted in, in, my, in the way that I come with my talents and with everything that I bring as a human, as a full human. And uh, again, what we see as part of that is not only successful cultures, but cultures where organizations that are more productive, that are more efficient, that are able to provide the best service in the world as a result of the work they put in through the DEIB, through the, uh, through the pronouns and language. So as you know, Yvonne, mental health is also very important, right? So 
being able to recognize someone as they see themselves and honor that is also a huge impact into the wellness of the employee, of mental health. So I, there's just so many great things that being able to do a pronoun training, understanding it and putting it into action, that uh, so many positive effects that it has on different companies. Oftentimes, too, um, Miriam, I hear the word ally mm -hmm. and the, um, the concept of allyship. Um, so in support of the LGBTQ community or any other underrepresented mm -hmm. group um, within an organization, what are some tips or some actual, actionable advice that you can give on how to show up as an effective ally? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I once heard a story about um, this organization that uh, they do volunteer work. And what they do is their calling in the world is when uh, wounded soldiers come back uh, and they're in the hospital and they can't get up for themselves. Somebody stands by their bed and they say, I'm standing for you because you can't do this. And when I heard that first thing, it really touched me. I know my own struggle. I in my own struggle, it was difficult for me to stand for my own self in this journey. So what being an ally means is I see you, I hear you, you matter, and I stand for you. I, it is my responsibility to learn about the language, to learn about your world and your story without judgment, to learn with curiosity, and to be able to create a culture where people are respected and seen and there's trust. So being an ally means this is safe. This is a safe space. I can take space, but I can also provide space. And so a lot of um, corporations are doing programs in that where they do have allies as part of the onboarding, as part of the uh, even the talent attraction. Different companies have groups uh, within their framework of uh, LGBTQ, of uh, Latinas in action, et cetera, where people that come in, they can have a, already a, a community built in. So being an ally is very important. It's making it safe for others to be who they are. It's taking a stand when maybe that person doesn't, cannot even stand for themselves. And it is a decision. It is a commitment. And sometimes, again, I go back to the word courage, right, from the cur and heart. It takes courage. When you're in the break room, now that we're back in the offices, and you hear someone making a comment that, uh, you know, is, is something that is not appropriate, being able to pull that person aside and say, hey, you know, that comment, maybe you have good intentions, but it's not appropriate. It's not aligned to our values. It's not aligned to who we are. And here is how. And, and humanizing it for people, not coming from a place of what's wrong or building walls, but rather connecting with uh, humans and, and humanizing the story, seeing how it, how it affects people, right? Because I remember in my early years uh, of work where people would, or even my own family, not only in, in my office, but in my own family where they would use uh, words or comments that were very disrespectful. And I remember initially it's like, okay, well, that's... That's the way it is until I had enough courage to say, hey, that's not OK. That hurts me. I'm part of that population. By you using those terms that the derogatory, it hurts me. Can you not do that? And here is why. So we all have a responsibility to do that. Well, thank you, Miriam, for the intentional focus around um, Pride Month and some things that organizations can consider. Um, but moving forward, I know that you are doing so much work in the DEIB space. So whether it's related to um, support of the LGBT community of employees in an organization or just more holistically DEIB efforts, what are some of the trends that you're seeing um, in this book of work? Um, what are some of your clients who are maybe more advanced in their journey on DEIB? Where are they focusing? Where are they investing? Mm -hmm. So I think the, the clients that are more advanced within the DIB, they have a clarity as to why they're doing the work. It matters to them. They have a way to measure the success and the levers that they're turning. Uh, and they not only 
infuse it into how they do the work, but also an extension to who are they serving? And are they seeing who they're serving and how they're serving with the DEIB lens? They hold themselves accountable by saying, you know what, what are some metrics? If we built a dashboard to see if this is working or not, what are some bold metrics that we're going to take on to move the dial there? Do we have uh, the, the diversity? Do we have the equity in, in terms of where we want to be? Where did we start? What was that baseline? So companies are now having those metrics and that dashboard and creating action plans. Uh, companies that have, you know, some companies have been doing this work for a long time, right? And they're very transparent in where they are in their journey. And I think that that is another thing. We must share stories. We must share stories of how this work has made us better as individuals, as corporations, as businesses, all right? And I think that the other thing, and it's again connected to the word courage, is that companies that take on this and understand their why and have clear action and are built in into long-term strategic plans. It's built into the 5, 10, 20-year strategic plan. They're also bold about taking a stand when something's not right, even if it means that it's going to impact their bottom line because they're not short-sighted. They may, they understand that staying true to their values and to what they believe in in the long term is the right thing to do. So uh, those companies really create raving fans, right? Because we all want to be with companies, with organizations, with the communities that stand for the right thing. So I, I say for the future, build it into your strategic plan measure, have some type of measurements, take bold action and lead with courage and an open heart. You've used the word courage um, a number of times in our conversation today, and um, it just strikes my heart every time you say it. But in this context, uh, Miriam, I'm reminded of many organizations now that are hosting courageous conversations training Mm -hmm. as one of their next evolution of training courses for leadership, even at top levels down to mid levels. Are there other training topics um, that you're getting a lot of requests for or that you know corporations are really pushing to implement? Yes, so you mentioned some of them, right? Like pronoun training. Um, How do you build in the language in the policies? And we do also a lot of work with organizations and their culture. How do we infuse that psychological safety along with DEIB and they go hand in hand? How do we build in this DEIB plan into the strategic mission? How do we get the board of different organizations to be aligned? Um, And I think that an ongoing thing, uh, like you said, that courage is being able to get really clear uh, around what we value. And how does all this connect together? So how do we take a stand for being in the DEIB way, not only doing, but being, and also our values, and at the same time being profitable and growing? And what we find out is that all those things are connected and they are dependent on each other. So those are some of the training topics that uh, are, are that companies ask most often. And I got to tell you, oftentimes companies come to us and say, the people that really need to attend this training, they're not going to attend, you know, and I've heard that multiple times. And to me, this is about our share of humanity and humanizing the stories, because I've shared my own journey of uh, being in, in the part of the LGBTQ community, but we all have our own story. You might have felt uh, alone, isolated, uh, not belonging in a certain part of your life. Maybe you didn't get admitted to the college you wanted to go to. Maybe you didn't become a lawyer or a doctor like your parents wanted you to. And how did that feel? And uh, being able to humanize this and ingrain it into the day-to-day of humans and corporations is what the work is. Mm. That's so powerful, Miriam. It's not DEIB work, it's human work. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Well, Miriam, it was so great to spend some time with you today. Um, thank you for all that you've shared and um, would love to have you come back and just talk more about what you're seeing in the work of DEIB and maybe even spend some more time on the metrics and the measurement piece, um, which I know many businesses are, are really striving to understand how do we measure not only short-term, but long-term impact in the DEIB space. So I'm glad that you touched on that as well, but thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Vaughn. It was a real joy. Thanks so much. Thank you.